All right. Thank you, Lyndon. As promised, I'd like to reintroduce you all to Brandon Pericon, our talented TAP staff rigger and animator. Last week, Brandon offered us a lesson on the hero's journey and different arcs of storytelling. This week, we're going to discuss his exciting story and career path into the world of animation. Brandon, we're so happy to have you back here with us, and I'm excited to discover that you'll be sharing your thesis project with us. Uh, much like Ellen, you had attended the School of Visual Arts, and I look forward to hearing about your decision to become an animator and rigger. Before we begin, I'd love for you to maybe share your thesis project to start, as I know our participants are very much looking forward to seeing it. So if you could kindly pull that up, that would be awesome. So why don't we play it? And I'd love to have you talk through your experience in working on it. All right, hey, Kat. Mm -hmm. um, all right, I'll sh screen share right now. Um, oh, hold on, I gotta turn on computer sound. Oh yes, yes they definitely will wanna hear it too.
thank you so much for sharing it. And I'm realizing that this is the first time I've seen your thesis uh, in its completion. So I appreciate you sharing that. Also some really familiar names in the credits, which I really appreciate. Um, so with that said, and as I mentioned earlier, I'd love for you to talk about the experience of making a thesis pro uh, project. I'm conscious that I did see some names that you were collaborating with. You know, I'm, I'm, I'd love to hear how the project began from its inception until, you know, you had the, the project delivered or completed. Sure. Uh, so uh, it all started junior year at SVA, um, where me and my partner, we were planning on um, collaborating together for our thesis. So we started pitching ideas on what we wanted the story to be. Um, it, it all originally came from this one piece of concept art that we found on like ArtStation or Pinterest. It was, um, it was like a tree, like a world tree that uh, the many different branches went out to various, um, oh, hold on. It seems my Vimeo was still going. Yeah, Vimeo was still going. Um, but yeah, it was a world tree that where the branches would lead off into different planets and we were gonna have an explorer go through each of them. But that proved to be too ambitious. <laughs> So uh, yeah, as time went on um, and we entered senior year, we refined our story, kept trimming it down, seeing what's, what was possible, what wasn't. Um, and uh, I, we found that um, once we had the story set, we, we needed to find people to assist in the project because we knew we couldn't handle everything ourselves. So because I had finished rigging the characters for my thesis really early on, um, I then started asking around uh, to the other seniors and asking if any of them needed anything, any rigs done in a sort of transaction sort of way. So then I was able to get some modelers to come in and model um, like our spaceship. Uh, we were able to get some texture artists for the various like the sky and other things. Um, I did get some lighting, uh, instruction from s some of my friends. Um, so I, I really, it was really helpful. Um, I ended up collaborating, I think on like eight different projects on senior year. Oh, wow. Now yeah, collaboration is certainly key when you're creating a project or your thesis project. What would you say maybe might have been the biggest challenge in creating this, this thesis? Like what was your biggest challenge? Ooh, uh, I think I think we were just too ambitious at first because we were going to have a variety of different environments. Um, and we also were planning on uh, rendering the the entire film in the Unreal Engine. And at the time we that we hadn't like used it. we had we had just one uh, one of our classmates who knew a lot about it, and we were hoping to receive some. Uh, to collaborate and receive some instruction from them. But uh, ultimately, we just didn't know enough about Unreal to keep going down that path. So we mm -hmm. switched to rendering it in, in Arnold. Awesome. Yeah, Arnold is a great render. Um, curious as to, you know, how how you became a rigger and animator. What What interested you in terms of wanting to pursue that route? You know, obviously, when we go to university or when we study within a specific program, uh, you know, certain skill sets are of interest to us. And I'm just curious as to, first of all, what made you interested in, in becoming a rigger, let's say, especially for rigging these characters in your film. And then I'd also love for you to speak as to what is a rigger for those of us in the audience who may not know what a rigger does. Uh, so a, a rigger is essentially similar to like a puppet maker where you, uh, we receive uh, 3D models and we, put uh, bones and joints into a character that allow that character or prop to be uh, animated. Um, so for me, my experience with animation uh, goes back pretty far. Um, in high school, uh, I, well, all my life I've been uh, a, mus a musician. I was planning on being a musician or doing some sort of maybe at least keeping it as a hobby when I um, was growing up. And in high school, my sister 
she does graphic design and she introduced me to 3ds max so that was like my first um peek into the behind the scenes of like video games and other things and that's why she showed it to me um and i thought it was really cool i tried playing with it at first but i had no idea what was going on um so after that uh my sister recommended that i enroll in the sva pre-college program and that's where i got my like i, I finally got a, like some classes in on it and i i did we did a little bit in that class we did um some very basic animation basic modeling mm -hmm. i did like a a pac-man uh animation thing mm -hmm. it was toon shaded and it was like really weirdly animated but it was <laughs> i was pretty proud of it at the time and i, I had a great time um all that summer uh, learning the program awesome. um and then yeah and then i just applied to a bunch of animation schools and luckily sva took me in that's great that's a great story um what do you most enjoy about rigging or animating let's say because you've also spoken as to what an, you know the animation piece yeah um hmm I like rigging, but I think the what I like most about it is the uh, I get to work with a variety of different characters. Mm -hmm. um, at first, I was actually going to be a modeler and sculptor because I wanted to create the models and characters that I would work with. Um, but uh, as SVA went on, I um, had classes to like one of my classes, it was an animation class and I had to make a character uh, and rig it. So I learned rigging as a result of that. And I found that it came very easily to me. And um, uh, since then, just a bunch of people have, uh, they saw that, like some of my classmates saw that I, uh, that it came easy, easily to me and they recommended me for some thesis films and it kind of just took off from there. And I've, I've really liked um, working with the variety of characters I've had. I've had, um, I've, strangely uh, enough, I've worked with like a lot of humanoid animal uh, rigs. Um, I've also worked on, uh, I've worked on a few animal rigs, like um, just a quadrupedal. Um, but it's, it, it, I've definitely worked with a wide variety of like uh, textured characters and it's been a great time. Awesome. I have to say, speaking on behalf of being a recruiter, um, riggers are very much in high demand. So for those of you who are in the audience and who have those skill sets as a rigger um, and, and it comes naturally to you, it's very rare that it does. So that's quite exciting. Um, definitely pursue that as a passion. Uh, it can make you very marketable. Now, Brandon, you and I have spoken about a project that you've worked on called Frankenstuff. So mm -hmm. I'd love for you to perhaps like start pulling that up as well, because um, it sounds like a really cool project, very different than what you've just shared with us. Um, and I would love for you to, you know, talk about that project itself and how it varied from other projects that you've worked on. Um, it would be good to get a sense of, of the rigging process there too. All right. Um, so for Frankenstealth, uh, Frankenstealth is a project that I recently uh, hopped on. Um, it's still in progress. Uh, here's the rig that I worked on. I worked on this uh, girl character. Um, so the way I was introduced to this project, um, I was, uh, I received an email, uh, I, I believe it was through LinkedIn, and um, uh, it was from an SVA alumni. Uh, he had, he had no idea that I also went to SVA, um, but I knew of him by, through his name, and also one of my classmates had uh, modeled for him in the past. So he told me about his film, Frankenstealth, and um, it's like a from what I know of the project, it's like a coming of age story with a, with a daughter and a, and a father. Um, and he showed me some concepts and he asked if I was, uh, if I had the time and if I could rig, he gave me a, a huge list of um, like questions of what was possible and what wasn't possible with the rig. And we went to work and I feel like it's one of the more complex rigs I've done. Um, I've never actually, uh, gone as far as to make one of these um, facial UIs on the on the side. Yeah. Um, but I really love how it came out. That's awesome. Sounds like a really fun project. 
Yeah. Um, how many um, artists were involved with this project or are involved with this project? Because I keep speaking about it as it's in past tense, but it's still active. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, I know that he's got uh, several modelers, animators, and texture artists working on it. Okay. And do we have like an anticipated delivery date for this? I'm also not sure. I know that uh, no, everything things always... were slowed down, unfortunately, because uh, I couldn't move to work on the father rig. Um, and he had trouble finding another rigger to uh, rig it. Understood. But uh, I think he, he finally, he got someone to do it. Oh, that's awesome. No, it looks like a wonderful project and I'm excited to see more of it. And I appreciate you sharing like a little sneak peek into something that, you know, we're all gonna see come to fruition soon too. That's always part of like the fun that I have with this process. Um, so I'm just checking, I'm just trying to see in anticipation of our next couple of questions, because I am gonna throw a lot of questions your way, but I think some of our audience members have been asking some pretty great questions about, uh, about your process. Um, one of our participants wants to know, what is the most challenging aspect of rigging that you have, that you found? Hmm. What do you find uh, most challenging about the rigging process? I think the hardest thing for me to learn was um, working with nodes in the, uh, in, for me, I, I, I rig in Maya. So um, when I was learning how to rig uh, at first, I didn't really know the how to do things the complex way. Like I had a, I knew how to make FK IK arms, but uh, the way I did it was very simple and not animator friendly. So, um, for those who don't know what FK IK arms are, uh, essentially uh, an IK arm, you can move the wrist and the elbow will follow wherever you position it, and for FK, you just rotate, um, you know, shoulder, elbow, wrist to get your hand where you want it to be. Um, but the way I had it set up, when you switch between the two, it would snap back to its original point and um, you wouldn't really be able to, it would be tough to get it to line up when you switch between the two uh, arm modes. But uh, I, luckily, I received some instruction from uh, one of my alumni, uh, Brett. Mm -hmm. He, I worked on uh, several projects with him, and uh, he showed me how he does his FKIK arms. And there's a, a transition between the two, so any animation is smooth and um, it looks great, a lot better than what I used to be doing. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, one of our participants asked a really, really great question. Um, uh, you know, is, do you, can you recommend any processes or softwares for beginners who have no exposure to rigging whatsoever? Do you have any recommendations for how they could perhaps get into rigging if that's of interest to them? I think, uh, well, there's, there's Maya uh, and I haven't really tried rigging in uh, too many other programs, but for Maya, um, there are some uh, auto riggers out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so an auto rigger is just a, a pre-coded um, template where you put it on a character, you match up where the, uh, where the wrist goes, where the hips go like that. And you hit a button and it'll generate the rig for you. And then from there, it's good practice. That's how I started out. I practiced skin weighting like that because back then I had no idea how to rig. Um, so that's how you can get started on some beginner rigs. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I know that's quite helpful for those of us who are interested in learning about rigging, including myself. Um, so uh, my next question, I'd like to segue into um, what inspires you? You know, I'm conscious that as artists, um, we're constantly inspired by our environments or by specific artists um, we look up to or friends or family. I'd love to get a sense as to who inspires you and what inspires you. Um, so as for who inspires me, um, uh, I'm, I'm pretty inspired by my two, uh, rigging mentors. Uh, they're, they're both SVA alumni. Uh, I have their web pages right here. Oh, that'd be great for you to share that. I appreciate that. Uh, so this is Brett Taggart. Um, 
both both my mentors are currently character TDs in uh, Disney. Um, and I say mentors as in like they've helped me in the past. Uh, I haven't reached out to them in a while, except for when I was like doing my demo reel. <laughs> but uh, he, so Brett recently worked on this uh, Ang rig, uh, which I've been seeing a lot on uh, Instagram now. <laughs> a lot of animators are playing with it. Um, and he's worked on a bunch of um, films already. So there's that. Uh, so this is Brett and Michael Altman. Some pretty popular, well-known films he's, he's been involved with, same here. Yeah, they've both been a tremendous help in helping me grow as a rigger and um, their, their work is inspiring, to be honest. Like everything I see is just awesome. I appreciate your sharing that. Um, they're both quite talented and, and both pretty big names in the industry. It's wonderful that you've managed to connect with them. Um, yeah. So there are a couple of questions that I asked Alan last week about storytelling. Um, I'd like to ask you the same, especially since we're going to be reuniting you both next week. Um, what are some ways in which our participants uh, can share their stories and become storytellers themselves? Obviously, it doesn't have to be necessarily through rigging, but would welcome any thoughts on your end as to advice that you could offer them. Sure. Um, so as for advice on becoming a storyteller and um, getting your work out there, uh, I find that using social media to your advantage is a great way. Um, I often enjoy going on Instagram and following any like comic artists or um, people who just post like their original characters out there. Uh, one of them is Char Carl's Delmo, Delmo. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but I, I see his work often and I, it is always very inspiring. I always like want to model out and rig some of these characters that he has. Um, but besides using social media, I know that there's uh, Webtoons. Now, I don't know too much about Webtoons, but I do know you can like publish your own stories and comics. Uh, uh, Carl's also has like his own comic on there. Oh, nice. Yeah, Webtoons is a really great reference. I appreciate you sharing that with the group because I think it's something that we could all benefit from. Yeah. Um, my next question, and I, I encourage our wonderful participants to ask as many questions as they can. Um, what do you most appreciate about your job? What do you most enjoy about what you do? Um, so working at the animation project has been awesome. I uh, really enjoy being a part of the um, creative process in a lot of the uh, projects that we work on. Um, back pre-COVID when we had our in-person groups, I, I enjoy um, the story pitching process. That, that's always been uh, my favorite. And I'm really grateful that I get to keep working on new films. Mm -hmm. um, being uh, working in the industry, you don't always get that option. So most of the times, you just hop onto an existing project, and you don't really have much of a say in uh, where the story goes. So that's been awesome. Yeah, I, d I definitely agree with you. I, I share that sentiment working at the animation project myself. Now, is there a particular project that you've worked on um, at any point in your career? You know, you, you still have a, a, an incredibly expansive career moving forward, um, but is there a particular project that you've worked on for which you're most passionate about, that you're most excited about? Uh, I would say my thesis. Uh, that's definitely the thing that I put the most effort and time into. Um, I kind of wish I could go back and do it again. And me and my th thesis partner did say we were gonna make a sequel or make a make a second thesis but um without 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 having that strict deadline uh it was hard to keep motivated and keep focused but um it's definitely something i wish i could uh um experience again um again because of the creative freedom and just being able to focus on something entirely your own how much time did you have to work on your thesis like how did that what did that process look like was it a couple years? Was it a year? Uh, it was. It was a, like a little under a year. It was. Um, uh, a lot of the time was just spent on the story, getting that story uh, polished up, because like originally we were gonna have like, um, uh, like 
those Star Wars speeders kind of feel. We were going to have uh, various different environments. We were going to have dynamics. And we had to simplify. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, someone actually from our audience asked, you know, uh, going back to your thesis, which we've just been referencing, how did you come up with the story idea for your thesis? Um, because they love the relationship between the explorer and the robots. Yeah, we, um, man, it was, it's all a blur. Mostly uh, me and uh, Chris, my partner, we, I, I just remember we'd have these story building sessions where we would go get Go Go, go, go Curry, which is like a couple blocks from SVA. We'd yes. come back um, and we'd just work on it nonstop. Um, we would show off art that we liked, um, art, uh, like art styles that we liked and try to get uh, a feel for what we wanted. We definitely wanted that cute um, sidekick character. So that's how we came up with Blip. Um, I think there was a couple of different, um, I actually have a folder full of my thesis uh, oh, really? uh, inspiration. If, if anything, I can show that later. But um, there was a bunch of like different lighting uh, concept arts that we found that we liked. And it all eventually boiled down to a, like a sci-fi type film that we wanted to do. That's like awesome. a, a, the, the spaceship looks like it's broken apart mostly because of the inspired from a lot of the art that we saw during that time. Oh, awesome. And actually I might wanna see a few of your references. You know, we do have probably another nine minutes together. Um, Lord Blackburn, which is a really, really cool name, um, also in the audience um, asks, what were some of the ideas that you had that made it into the project? Um, so this could be a nice little segue into your perhaps showcasing some of the references that you might have. Um, be great to get a sense of some visuals there. Uh, one second. Okay, so I got my art here. Uh, can you repeat the question? Yes, just um, you know, you were indicating you might have some references of the ideas that you had for your project, or some you know some thoughts and, and um, references themselves rather. Um, so the Lord Blackburn was asking, um, what were some ideas that you had that made it into the movie or made it into the, the thesis project? Okay, um, so uh, we definitely had a lot of these like designs for uh, rocks. Unfortunately, um, we didn't have enough time to model all these different things, but we, we did like the designs. Uh, things that did make it into the film, we had a bunch of, uh, we had this uh, inspiration for a cave. Um, we have a lot of crystal uh, reference. Crystals are something that we focused on a lot for the film. Yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. A lot of these are just like wilderness ideas for uh, this alien planet. This is great. Where did you pull a lot of these references? Uh, all, all of these pretty much came from ArtStation. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, at the time I didn't really have a, a Pinterest, so I didn't look through there. Mm -hmm. But on ArtStation, you can choose uh, like concept art, character art, and things like that. So we narrowed our search and we just started looking. Awesome. Yeah, ArtStation is a really great reference um, for those of you in the audience who are looking for references and fellow artists' work. Um, Pinterest is also a really great uh, reference to use. I know a lot of fellow creative directors use Pinterest a lot for their pitches in their, um, as they pitch new projects to clients and to directors. So well, these are great. Are you still in touch with your co-collaborator? Yeah, we have a, like a SVA 2017 Discord, where we just uh, hang out every now, every Sunday and play Among Us. Do you ever think that you might collaborate again on a future project? Yeah, I really hope so. I still kind of want to do that um, second thesis. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can imagine. Well, these are awesome, really incredible visuals.
So I kind of would like to surprise you with a question on networking, because you told me a really interesting story last week that I didn't know about in terms of how you became acquainted with the animation project. And I'm conscious that it's so, so important, especially in this industry, and especially as we're in this space all together, um, you know, the, the sense of connection that we all have and the sense of, uh, you know, being able to support one another and recommend one another. And I'd love to hear your story as to how you became involved with the animation project. Yeah, um, so making connections and keeping in touch with friends is always important. Um, uh, so, uh, so Leo is another animator here at TAP, and uh, he's been he's been at TAP longer than I have. When he first joined, he um, actually reached out to me and asked me to apply with him. Um, but at the time, I was uh, sorry. I think my dog's just like stretching. Um, oh. So if you hear noise, that's him. The nature of Zoom. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Leo asked if I was down to join uh, TAP, but at the time I wasn't sure um, of how, like if I could do it. I wasn't sure if I would be a good teacher or not. Um, so I hesitated. Uh, I think like a year or two went by and uh, eventually my thesis partner, Chris, also joined and he, he was having a great time. So uh, I thought might as well. I, I I didn't have a job at the time, so I I hopped on and um, I don't regret it. It's been awesome ever since. Yeah, we do certainly have a really wonderful group over here, and um, I feel like we're we're all quite fortunate. And especially you know being able to lean on your skill set and on your talents, especially these past three weeks alone, um, is quite special. Um, I think one of my final questions on my end would be you know you've obviously shared your thesis project. We've obviously talked about the technical side of things, but something else that I like to ask our, our guest speakers um, is, you know, we're obviously uh, dealing with a lot in the way of the pand pandemics at this time, and our hearts are very heavy, and there's a lot going on at once. And, and um, during these really strange and disconcerting times, I'm conscious that, you know, I really like to lean on you all for your advice. Um, what are some suggestions and thoughts you might have for our, our participants to, to deal with, with these moments of uh, confusion or panic or concern that we all feel. You know, it always ebbs and flows. And I wanted to get your thoughts or your suggestions, advice. Yeah, my my advice would be to definitely keep in touch with friends and keep making connections. Because um, I find that those, uh, like the like I mentioned, I play uh, every Sunday where I play with Chris. Uh, I, that definitely helps to relieve stress. Um, and uh, making connections has pretty much been how I've made my way through life. Uh, like, um, so at SVA, when I was uh, in between junior and senior year, um, because of my connections, I found out that Bloop Animation was hiring for a rigger. Like one of my friends uh, reached out to me and told me and said I should apply. So I applied to Bloop Animations to, do a, uh, to work on a project. And that's, that's how I met uh, Brett and how I met Moore. Oh, um, nice. And, you know, I worked on that project. I got better at rigging. So then senior year went by a lot easier. And then uh, since then, you know, Brett has been a huge help to me, mentored me a couple of times. Uh, I, I sent him rigs and asked him for feedback if I was doing things wrong. <laughs> um, it's definitely helped me a lot. Um, through Brett, I met Michael Altman, and uh, he actually, when he was leaving Hornet to go to uh, Disney for the internship, he uh, actually left my name to the um, to the recruiter there, and uh, they reached out to me, and uh, I almost got um, several gigs from that, but uh, things didn't line up. It's all about timings, and I'm sure I'm sure they will continue to. Um, I'm actually going to sneak in one last question um, from Black Nico eight one four. They ask, and if you don't mind, I'm going to sneak this in now because we're going back to your your thesis project. Um, and it's a really, really, really good question. Uh, when creating your movie or your thesis film, were there any challenges throughout your workflow in either story, modeling, or compositing, and how did you tackle it? A really great question. I'm gonna say modeling was one of our bigger uh, tackles. 
because um, though both me and my partner knew how to model, we weren't, it wasn't neither of our focuses. Mm -hmm. So um, our main character Wedge, the one with the red hair, mm -hmm. uh, we had a version of him from junior year that I had rigged and it did not look great at all. <laughs> like the, the eyes were like sunken into the head and it kind of looked like Phineas from Phineas and Ferb. Uh, that's so idea. luckily uh, I rigged on a, another project for another senior and he was able to rig our character for us. Or, sorry, model our uh, character for us. That's awesome. It's the beauty of collaboration. Well, listen, Brandon, I'm really, really excited that we got to spend some more time together. I'm especially excited that we'll get to see you again next week. Um, it's been a pleasure being able to learn more about you and to have our participants learn more about you. I also thank our participants for asking such spectacular questions. And um, yeah, we've been very lucky to spend all this time together. So thank you. Cool. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you soon.